Kofi Tengela, who's an OSI fellow, we know it's Open Society Institute. He also works at Augusta Fell Savage. Please welcome him to the stage. What's up, Baltimore? Who love children in Baltimore? Yes! My name is Coley Tengale. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm here to unequivocally state that I am totally, completely, unapologetically in love with black African people, baby! I mean it. I love all of us as black folk. All of us, from what people consider the strong warrior spirit of black folk that's dealing with the horrors of urban life and poverty, some folk may call them ratchet and ghetto and hood rat, to black folks who are just middle class, who only want to be African in February or waiting for the next Black Panther so they can wear dashigi, Wakanda forever, black people. And then, and I also love the comatose, handkerchief-head black people. I still love you. I still love you. Black people, if you call them a Negro, will say thank you very much. <laughs> I love them. You know, black folk who uh, live, decide to live in the suburbs, um, call themselves Republican, living with their um, white husband or white wife and thinking that the world is post-racial. I love those black folk too. Oh, and by the way, black folk, who have biracial children, particularly white and black, <laughs> let me tell you Just because your child is black and white doesn't mean that every biracial black and white child is gonna look like Halle Berry and Shamar Moore. It's not guaranteed. <laughs> because I'm selling. Everybody said, oh look at my child, oh look at the child, black and white, just gorgeous and beautiful. In the words of my students that I teach, some black and white mixes are straight fur, dig, dig, dig. <laughs> So I had to get that out. That was like gas, it was backed up. <laughs> but I said, I love being black because I think being black is the ish. It straight up is. It, it is, I just love it. But remember, but when you drip too hard, somebody's gonna come around and hate on your wave. I said, it's ridiculous. What happens is, and I only thought, I said I have to do something to let the world know that do, I really wanted to do something to change the world, to stop the systems, like institutionalized racism, white supremacy, generational poverty, misogyny, sexism, homophobia. And I thought the only way that I could do that and meld my skills as an actor, writer, comedian, filmmaker, is to take my black behind and become a teacher. <laughs> take all that into the classroom. And I did it, and I said, and I consciously chose to serve the system in which I was born. I'm telling you straight up right now, Baltimore City all day, as my students say, wake up, dummy. That's right, <laughs> Baltimore City all day, Lower Park Heights, 2500 block of Oswego Avenue. Yes, yeah, right, born and raised. And I said, I love, I love teaching. And the way I came up, I'm gonna share a few, I'm gonna share some other stories too about my amazing students that helped me to grow more than I believe I was able to help them. Teaching what I teach, what I call positive social change, theater and performing arts, we, I try to help with the academic teachers um, buttress um, reading and writing skill and use and sneak it in under performance. So, and let me tell you, my only rule is this, come into my class, be willing to participate and respect others. And let me tell you, when the growth process as an educator, has, I have come a long way. I am 
a recovering, overbearing, punitive yeller. There's nothing going on in my classroom. I've got impeccable classroom management because if I was a slave during slavery in this country, shoot, I wouldn't be in a field. I wouldn't even be in a house. I would be an overseer because I could check black folks. I could check black children. I could check the, the, should black children be sitting, reading, writing. Would they be learning a damn thing? Hell no, but they wouldn't be making any noise. And that's all my white administrator cared about. Got the black children in check for you, ma'am. Wahaha, I'm the John Wayne a classroom management. <laughs> and I realized I was doing more damage to black children than hurting them. Yelling at black children don't work. It brings harm, and particularly with a lot of our babies. And black folk, we got to admit our stuff. I know how it is being a black African person and talking about our issues. We got lots of issues. Black folk, we got issues. Black folks, I'm going to say it again. What do we have, black folk? Issues. That's right. We could come out once a damn week with our issues. It could be a new edition. We got issues. And so we have to admit those issues to come out. And that's what I learned as a teacher. I'm not there to be an overseer to get an outstanding observation score in a system and curriculum that's designed not to make African babies soar into their greatness, to elevate not only themselves, but their community. You know, I'm not there to perpetuate that. I want them to grow and blossom, not just get a high test score to show rigor. That's a new word, <laughs> rigor. <laughs> we got rigor, baby. Nobody learning nothing, but we got rigor. <laughs> and we want to show growth. We got growth, rigor, growth, growth, and rigor. We got growth and rigor, growth, growth, and rigor. Ah. See, the teachers know what I'm talking about, they just digging in. I was gonna come out running like I was. How many folk have taught? Taught here? Right, okay. How many folk gonna say that? I was gonna come out running and say, oh God, I, I got to the book before they put out the late book. Okay, everybody know about that? Everybody know about that? See, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. And I was gonna do a whole thing about getting an occasion. You know what occasion is? You miss one day and you sit, but you come back the next day, you realize you're sick, and you come to take another day off, that's two occasions, you only allowed three before the vulture administrator come for you. Leak down, you have missed too many days. Arr, arr. <laughs> Ruin your life. So, back to the rigor. Um, but me doing that wasn't helping African children, black children grow. And I said, I've got to grow too. I've got to become better. So I am proud to say that I am in my second year of overbearing black teacher yelling recovery. <laughs> well, I don't yell anymore. Because I realize that adds to the trauma and pain of our children. And also, too, it doesn't help when I have to have a parent-teacher conference, and I've been all in on my kid, and then I'm going to sit there with the administrative parent and bluff lie and say, I didn't talk about your child's edges and their crooked hairline. Because, because that little boy said that my breath was hot, and I was wearing hot water. Well, you want enough for that, huh, mommy? <laughs> All right. So I have to sit there. Well, I really enjoy Hakeem. He's a wonderful young man. And Hakeem said, <laughs> and your administrator backed it up because you don't want to be sued. <laughs> but as I teach the program, I come across some amazing people. One young man. He's a tremendous actor, writer, poet, but the streets were calling him. They were calling him to do dumb stuff and to get arrested, but they were calling. So we, the troupe I had, we perform all over Baltimore, and we had to do a show on the weekend, and, and he was 
on probation. He was on a home detention monitor. And so I had to call his um, parole officer, as they call, affectionately called my PO, um, and see if he could have time on a Saturday to do this community show in a park. So I had to call his PO, the PO said, well, you have to call the box officer. The box officer? There's a person who runs the box that's on the child's ankle? There's a whole different division? There's a job for that? All right. And so to get purpose for him to perform. But let me tell you, this young man had mad swagger. He'd been arrested, he failing, but he rocked that, he rocked that ankle bracelet like it was like some diamond studded Gucci. He said, yo, Mr. T, what I'm saying? Look at that, you know I'm always fresh to death. Yeah, yeah, got the sneaks on, yeah. <laughs> the, this is the misogynistic term, loving term, that black African boys have for black African girls. <laughs> Cause you know, the biddies like it. The biddies. So, you, you know, wait a minute, it, translate. Anybody know what biddy? Like, I'm not gonna curse, cause we're gonna do the alphabet in a second. When I said biddy, who knows what I meant? Yeah, all right, all right. You know it, go and tell the unhip person next to you what biddy is, and that is misogynistic, it's a bad thing. It's a bad. All right, so he all dressed up, so he went to perform. And it was an amazing performance, but unfortunately, he got arrested, and the most painful thing was for me to go out. He messed up in white folk world in Anne Arundel County. Six foot three, young black man. Yep. No, um, Jennifer Dorsey. Which one's the nice one? I can't recall, but I went there, and it was like a movie. I had to sit behind glass with a, I didn't know they had them anymore. It was a phone and a wall with a cord. And talk to him through double-plated glass and then act like everything's okay, that I have a natural conversation with a former student, a young person I love, through double-plated glass. And we talked about his story, how he lost his brother, who was murdered in East Baltimore, that his mother, who loved him, but she had her own challenges of self-worth and self-esteem, chasing, um, chasing behind a man who didn't really care for her, so she, and the man didn't want to deal with her son, so he threw down an ultimatum. You can roll with me to Las Vegas, but you, I don't want to deal with your son, so she left the, his, her son to fend for himself. But he stayed in touch with me. And right now he's out. He still thinks he's going to be the next great rapping sensation, but I told him, you're gonna make a choice. Cause I'm not gonna deal with you after all that blackness I poured into you. All this talk about white supremacy, institutionalized racism, you better represent, you gotta make a choice. What kind of rapper are you gonna be? Simple amigos who don't even use words. I don't know if you heard the amigos. Here they, this is an amigo song. A song of my God, a sip of the gib of the dip of the die. Yik, yik, ya. What is a yik, yik, ya? All right. Or you, be, you can be a J. Cole. You can be a Kendrick Lamar. I really want you to go old school, be last poets. But if you can just get the Kendrick and J. Cole, I'll be happy. And he still calls in the most beautiful thing from an adult 56-year-old black man to a 19-year-old black man. When he leaves the phone talking to me, he says, Mr. Tingela, I love you. That's what it means to be a black teacher. That's what it means to me. And let me tell you another thing. We as black, we gotta get over this gay-ish, cause I got students who taught me that it's dumb, and they've taken me down the, um, the rainbow, cause they are on fleek and on point. Let me tell you, I've got a trans daughter, two inches taller than me, Gorgeous when she decides to trick out and told me the power of a personal pronoun. She was attacked and beaten and got a concussion outside of a basketball game, Douglas High School. She had to run across the median strip to Mondamin Mall, find a police officer, the security guard at the supermarket to get protection. Like other students go around, I call every kid my son, my daughter, and everything else. Um, and then one young lady said, yeah, um, you're not, you know, don't call me, you're not my father. I said, 
on Sunday, you and your mother, we're gonna sit down and have a real conversation. But, <laughs> and that's the wall off. She said, he said, you do too much. Right. I call young men with my son and my daughter, and I can call this transgender, beautiful young woman who's a great poet, singer, and writer. I can call her my daughter in class, and nobody dare try to come for her because my class is about love and appreciation and becoming the best that you can be. Now, I got to get out of here in a second. I want to ask everybody. I need you I need stand up, stand up. All right, we're going to send some love and energy out of here before we go. Put your hand on my shoulder, and you put your hand on her shoulder, and you reach out and get a hand, touch her too. Come on, everybody, link up, link up. I want to say something. I want everybody to be on this. Everybody try to touch her shoulder, somebody. <laughs> everybody should have worn deodorant today. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> this is, say, your mission, your mission. if you choose to accept it, is to be a teacher, to make the world better. And one more thing, nothing can stop us, because we're all the way up. Thank you so much. I'm Coley Tingela, peace and love.